Well, in the world of old school 90 movies, they're definitely worth revisiting today. There's a wonderful little adventure called Office Space that's worth revisiting. Its, it's title brings back nostalgia, even today. The movie starts off innocently enough, with Peter going through and dealing with the bullshit of day-to-day -day traffic in the world, which we all can relate to. It shows the whole gang on their commute to work, what a great opening to a movie, something everybody loves to be fucking reminded of, but it's just so great. Then another great scene where Michael Bolton turns down his rap music because the fucking black guy's getting close. It's wonderful. Ah uh, yes, and Peter is now at work and he fucking hates his job and you can tell he hates his fucking job. It's a very relatable scene and uh, it's just really hilarious how it per perfectly encapsulates the, you know, modern uh, office environment. It's so fucking pointless what he does, it's such bullshit what he does and he's just, he's just loving every minute of it, it's so funny. Ah uh, yes, then the horrible, horrible fucking boss shows up and that is none other than the absolutely wonderful Bill Lumberg who just perfectly conveys just what a dick and loser he is the whole time and the play between Peter and uh, Peter and uh, uh, Lumberg is fucking so good it's so on point it's great the TPS report scene is so fucking funny too because they're just like <laughs> You just, you just know it's just something so, so, so stupid and the whole gang has to fucking do it for the work at this stupid office. The movie really starts to kick off when they get into the coffee shop and they start looking around at their options in their life and just the, the horrible day that fucking Peter's having, he makes, it, he makes it evident that he wants to change and change is coming. And you start to wonder and be like, uh, what are they gonna, what are they even gonna do? <laughs> A really, really, really dark point of this mo movie is when Peter actually goes there with the whole uh, shoot up thing. And uh, yeah, it's something that they would probably be a little touchy on uh, nowadays. But it just goes to show you that even 23 years ago, uh, society was so fucking different focused uh, with all the changes in the modern society today. And then we come across a young and extremely hot Jennifer Aniston. And uh, yeah, that's the high point of her career, and she too has a horrible boss and a horrible job that is hugely relatable, I'm sure, to many, many, many young women. Ah, but it isn't only a matter of time before the realistic depiction of the bullshit and day-to-day -day conspiracies you go through at work kick into real life in this movie. And uh, yeah, it's it, there's, there's a talk of layoffs, job security, bullshit. Uh, tasks that you have to do just very and annoying fucking people people you kind of like people you don't really like people that you don't like at all and fuck you in fact you fucking hate them uh, just a very realistic work environment we meet Peter's supremely awesome neighbor and uh, you know he's not he's that one type same type of person that everybody met in real life you don't like him and you don't particularly hate him he just kind of exists somewhere in that like realm of dude beer drinker guy. <laughs> a very realistic character even today. John C. McGinley is a very relatable character and a pretty awesome business consultant where it actually begs the question of whether or not he's above Lumberg and more important than him to the company. And that just makes it so obvious uh, because he plays that like off kind of crazy business E person just so perfectly in this it's hilarious there's a hypnotherapy lesson scene that's fucking hilarious where Peter has an epiphany when the guy dies in front of him and he's like you could just tell his his girlfriend's just a fucking cheating bitch and that starts off a pretty substantially awesome scene in the scenes in the movie and a course of direction for the movie that's fucking awesome where Peter just stops giving a shit. He really stops caring and he just doesn't doesn't go into work, ignores his voicemail, gets a good night's sleep, does the things he wants and just, just takes that day to himself that we've all fucking wanted and we've all thought about. It's <laughs> so amazing. 
there's all these scenes where they're doing kind of like interviews with the company to see if they're see if they're useful or not. Michael Bolton steals the show because you know he's just gonna be like, <laughs> you know what his inner thinking is just like, hates it so much. And uh, yeah, these these interview scenes are good because you know they're all under the microscope of the company. Uh, it's really fucking funny. And uh, <laughs> so Peter, I guess, is just not he didn't even show up. Another great scene in the uh, Peter not caring arc is he just randomly walks in and asks out Jennifer Aniston. And it's something that we've all dreamt of doing. And trust me, fellas, it does actually kind of work. Bravo senseless bravado may not nail you, Jennifer Aniston, but it has definitely, definitely worked for people in the past. They've shot way above their league. So remember, fellas, Peter can get Janice, Jennifer Aniston by just deciding not to go into work one day and doing it. You can too. Now there is another character arc. Steven Rude is Milton and he's v that quintessential weird dude who's potentially mentally capacitated who just gets pushed around and around and around and around at work. And uh, he's, I wouldn't say he's the most likable character, but he is a character that you do somewhat sympathize throughout the movie because he's clearly, clearly, clearly socially inept. Yeah, of course, Peter eventually does show up for the interview, but it's, it's when he just realizes that he comes in and he doesn't care if he gets fired or not because... I think I think the true reason for this is when you watch the guy die in front of him, he's like, well, you know, if you're gonna die anyway, why not fucking enjoy your life a little bit, you know? Um, and I think that's where that comes from, as far as I'm concerned. And that leads to probably one of the greatest scenes in, in this amazing movie is Peter goes into his interview and just does not give a fuck. In fact, it almost appears as if he wants to get fired at this point, where it, it's, just, it's just such a great scene and you just feel it coming on the whole fucking movie. It's so, so, so great. Surprisingly, this actually works on the company and they, they kind of see him for what he is, which is extremely intelligent and extremely undervalued by the company. And bizarrely, yeah, it, it, it works out for him, which is pretty great. The it, whole interview arc also adds to a pretty, pretty relevant and pretty depressing scene where they're all going over the people that they're gonna let go from the company. And I mean, this is, this is the root of the bullshit of society that we live in, is that people actually fucking expect us to like, be conniving and be sneaky and try and fuck over each other and fucking bullshit to make money or think of they make money. And it, it really rounds down the, the future. The, the management of this company is just a bunch of fucking idiots like most companies. So with Peter not really giving a fuck, he pro kind of works his way up in his company and doing this just utterly trying to get fired almost type of mentality and I think that that, that offers a pretty hilarious point too is that he did all this shit and didn't get fired off of it so yes I encourage everybody to do stupid shit at work because ultimately they don't give a shit about you so as we continue along in the movie, Milton loses more and more and more of his office space, and that's maybe where the possibility of the thing comes from. But it's hilarious because you know he's, you know he's just ready, rearing to snap, and that will actually lead to a lot of other parts in this movie. But <laughs> the way they just, the way they fuck him over is so hilarious and so relatable in every way to the working world. Weirdly enough, too, they seem to include a part where another sub-character does this mental breakdown thing, and it actually works out for him, because he tries to kill himself, and then he fails, and then he gets hit, and then he gets a massive settlement, and it's kind of like, it's one of those things where, like, he's been working his whole life, and just at the very end of his life, or what he thought was the end of his life, he actually, like, makes it. It's so weird. It's such a weird inclusion to a movie that was so unnecessary but it's one of those things that makes it this a good work of art is because it, it's like it's like why did they even put that in there and it makes you think be like holy shit that would be fucking crazy you try and kill yourself and then you win the the lottery of settlements so that's that's another perfectly on point cue to our society is that like 
you know, you could be ready to give up and then right around the corner you get luckier than anything. So that's like a don't give up kind of fucking statement. It's crazy. I mean, crazy to think of that's probably happened to people. They're ready to give up, boom, win the lottery or some shit. Now at this point in the movie, this is where it starts to get into a part. It's kind of the more, you know, you know like it's the more bigger part of this. So, so far the movie has really encompassed a lot of like just very basic cues on, on, on life and, and you know, society and how, how you go about your life. But then it starts to get into the criminal element where they plan and plot to, to basically siphon little bits of money off of Inotech. And it's true because Jennifer Aniston's character immediately picks up on the fact that, yeah, what they're doing is probably not going to go well down for them in the, the real things. And it's a big statement on the fact that, look, look what all he has, and he's also he's willing to risk it all for just a little bit of fucking over the company. And he's, he's kind of, Peter gets backed into a corner here. Peter kind of relates to the guy that got the fucking huge settlement and in many ways he's kind of like eh, maybe it is worth not you know giving fully up you know working working away and having a stable job and looking for the future is kind of what this guy ended up doing another hilariously great moment in all this is when <laughs> this fucking douchebag guy informs peter that Jennifer Aniston's character may have potentially fucked Lumberg, who he thinks is his boss, and, and, and basically kind of gets in his mind, and it just goes to show how, how fucking horrible the situation is going to have been for Peter. Uh, you know, as you know at the end, it all works itself out. Peter had an impasse in his life here, you start to feel for him quite a bit because, I mean, A, he's doing some shit that could get him in some serious trouble, he realizes, and then he also realized that potentially stupid boss he hated fucked his girlfriend and he just loves. It's a situation that doesn't bear thinking about. <laughs> the level of anxiety and stress that you accidentally sideswipe yourself into that, you know, is right around the corner potentially for all of us. Another hilarious scene ensues where the he has a dream where it invigorates Lumberg fucking and it's, it's, it's pretty great. It's a great one. Now this is a scene in the movie where it starts to get down to a little bit of, of where I disagree with the movie and what I like about the movie and things that things I wish were different and things that I wish I could change is that they actually find out that they are getting like tons of money siphoned off the company instead of just a little bit that they were planning to go unnoticed. And I was kind of like, at first, when I had watched it again and didn't realize it again, I was kind of like, oh, that would be sweet. Like, imagine if they made out of this with huge amounts of money or something. But it really turns out that they they fucked up and they, they're going to get caught for what they did. In many ways, I kind of wanted and hoped for them to have somehow made millions off of the company and not get caught for it or not have any repercussions that would be amazing or like maybe the company's stock was worth more so that little tiny decimal point was worth like tons of money and they could just like get under the bus with millions and go live it up but alas that's not really what happens in the movie and you'll see as you go ahead what actually happens Milton gets even more fucked over by the company as they put him in the basement, which is hilarious. But it really sends off for what actually occurs down in the end. And that's another part that could have led to more uh, hilarious subplots, because at this point they pretty much know they're going to get caught for what they did for Inatex. So they're trying to figure out ways of just desperate criminal activity to try and wash it all and away and fucking destroy it. But <laughs> it could have gotten really serious if they were like taking out the money, use the money to somehow get more money and then put more money back in or something. But alas, it never quite went there. It just kind of keeps it at the panic phase for them of being like, oh fuck, oh fuck, what are we gonna do? Oh fuck, oh fuck. I mean, yeah, they did, they created a computer program to basically steal from their company. So yeah. and. And it wasn't like a little amount so that they, they, they were even guaranteed to get caught. But uh, that leads us up to the end of the movie. But like most things in life, everything works out. And Jennifer Aniston forgives him for trying to do that. And forgives him for blaming her for fucking another guy. But, you know, it's, it's 
these kinds of little moments in this movie makes it deeply emotional. You know, a pivotal scene in the movie is when he slips his confession under Lumberg's uh, thing, where he fully submits himself to Lumberg, and uh, that's the that's kind of the point in the movie where you're like uh, you're like, ah, did he do the right thing, or could he have tried to get away with it? He's probably judging those actions as well. And then, uh, like at the end of the movie, he's kind of like kind of saying his goodbyes to all the people he cares about because he knows he's gonna get in trouble but like i mean you gotta think and wonder be like realistically what would they get for that you know probably nothing good but you know if they just tried to you know sneak their way out of it you know maybe potentially they could get away with not getting caught or something of course that's not what happened unexpectedly and kind of somewhat confusingly at the end of the movie milton burns the place down absolving any evidence of uh, this and you gotta wonder but like okay so this was in 1999 so the internet wasn't as widespread so i bet you they were thinking and because like it got me at first i was like well isn't it all on the internet like wouldn't they still be caught for the crime but you gotta realize like back in that time like everything was on hard drive on disk space and everything nothing was connected to the internet i mean i'm sure they had the internet back then but Maybe all the company's records or bookkeeping or something burning down would make them being absolved of, and of course the confession gone too. So I mean, Peter at this point just kind of lets it slip. And you guess that Milton somehow gets the money, I believe, and uh, that kind of brings us to the end. So all in all, things kind of work out for Peter. He gets a construction job. He kind of takes on the more ruralistic style of living. Uh, he's still friends with his buddies, still going out with Joanna. It, I guess it ends on a high note, in fact, but I wish that these guys would have gotten out of this all with some kind of massive settlement or or something. You kind of, you, you learn to like these characters so much you want something great to happen to them. But I guess in many ways, kind of all worked out for Peter. He didn't get in trouble with anything. He got to live a little bit on the bad side. He's got Joanna and he still kept his friends and got rid of Inotech fully from existence so <laughs> I mean I mean it all does in the end kind of work out for me and there you have it Office Space it's a short lived movie but it's a wonderful watch even today and if you haven't watched it for about 20 years or so it's time to pop it on because it's as fucking relatable if not relatable besides some of the minor gigs like the old old school computers and the obviously older technology you know no smartphones older cars that kind of thing if you can get past that it's still a perfectly relevant movie today and i would watch it if i were you